In my opinion, there's two types of people in the trade world. There's those that just want to show up to the job and have the bare minimum, all that they need for the job. And then there's people like me who want to just have it all. My name is Blake Huffine and this is the pack out build I did on my 7x16 enclosed trailer. Now before I did this build, I actually got online, I looked on forums, through Google, through YouTube, all kinds of Facebook groups, trying to find something to give me a starting point on this build. Now, I'm a plumber by trade, so it was very important that that trade was focused on this enclosed trailer build, but honestly, surprisingly, throughout all the different trades there are that can utilize Packout, there really is not a lot of content online that shows how people have done their builds. I've seen plenty of setups as far as out traveling and out and work and stuff, but nobody has done any videos and posted them showing how they did their personal build. So that is why I wanted to make this video to help somebody else get an idea for what they can do to set up their trailer for their trade. Now over here on this side, you'll see there's quite a bit of space still opened up. I haven't actually organized that properly just yet. I'm kind of still floating ideas on it. I did have a crate mounted up here, but I changed my mind on the crate being up front and I've utilized the space on top of my drawers over here, which we'll get to in just a minute. Now this plate right here, it's mounted, uh, I guess vertically to say it's, it's tilted the other way because it's the only way it would fit between the two trims. But right here I have in mind for my Gen 4 impact kit, the impact and drill combo kit, 10 out of 10 recommend highly recommend i've used many brands of tools and their impacts and drills and this gen 4 milwaukee is top of the line it's one of my most common used tools so i want it right here near the door where i can get to it real quick now below that plate you'll see that i have a glove holder here this glove holder came from the harbor freight tools it was like nine bucks two gallon compressor the uh, six and a half inch circular saw it hangs on this storage bin which i bought from lowe's and this contains my sewer camera, the locator, and the M18 inflator, and my half inch impact, and all rides right here. These are ladder, um, ladder holders for a garage that I got at Lowe's, and it holds this perfectly fine, and some other things that we'll get to in just a little bit. Um, it carries those just fine. I fastened the hammer hanger here because you always need a hammer close by. And then the trailer came with the spare tire, and so what I did was, is I just took one of these threaded flanges and fasten it to the wall, cut a piece of all thread and just stuck it in there and tighten it up with some fender washers on there. That way it holds it nice and tight. Again, this is just a simple torch holder that's from Lowe's and the torch is from Lowe's as well. It all just sits right there nice and neat and contained. Uh, I custom built this pack out first aid kit, which is a must if you're doing any type of, of uh, any type of trades work, you need a first aid kit. I emphasize that and it needs to be close to, it needs to be properly labeled and close to the door, close to your main entry point that you're gonna be using. And then these are just some pack out wall mounting uh, hooks that I have some things hanging on. These will probably get moved around again. As you can see, I have a lot of empty space. Um, this is the 10 foot inspection camera, the M12. Um, highly recommend this camera, it's great. It's got me out of a lot of bad situations. Now moving over here to this side of the front of the trailer, you'll see this is where my batteries and chargers land. This is their home. This is where they stay all the time. Um, I have these all wired in, which I'll show the wiring on this trailer in just a second, but these are all wired in together. So they're always, you know, got power. Whenever I flip the switch on, I can charge my batteries. I can keep them all stored up here um, real easy, real quickly. And they're even numbered. Now just showing what all I got going on here, uh, the, all the wires from these chargers, they all flow in here to this box. And here I have them wired to a light switch. So I can flip the light switch, it sends power to all the chargers, and I can easily just cut them off. This here is the light switch. Real quickly I can turn the lights on and off. And then I'm using this GCFI uh, outlet as the uh, 15 amp breaker to say for this trailer. This cord's running over to my air conditioner. I have it turned off right now. And then this cord's running to my uh, pack out radio, which obviously is not turned on right now. I'm a plumber, not an electrician, but I did wire these lights up myself. I got these lights from Lowe's. I'll put a link in the description for those as well. And these lights are just fastened to the top of the trailer with some self-tapping screws. Now, as you'll notice, not everything in this trailer is just bought at a box store. For instance, these uh, caulk gun holders that I made and they don't look the greatest but they work and that's what matters so what I did was I took an inch and a half pipe and I used these composite shims 
uh, on the back of the inch and a half pipe and I took the uh, back side or the end of a caulk tube and uh, just cut it off, slid it up over it and taped it on there. And the ridge of this caulk gun is the exact same diameter as the outside of inch and a half pipe. So all I have to do is slide it on there, send the plunger up behind uh, this caulk tube on the inside of the inch and a half pipe and lock it. And it's not going anywhere. As you can see back here for my longer drill bits, all I did was drill a uh, like a 3 8 inch hole on one side and then an eighth of an inch pilot hole through it on the other side. And that way I had a pilot hole to, uh, to screw it to the wall and my bit was able to pass through the pipe. Literally just capped them. You can slide your, slide your drill bits in it or anything else that you want to put in there this tubular. Now looking at the pack out mounting system, I just have three plates mounted flush against that wall. And then I have my air conditioner here, which is bungee corded to the pack outs and to a two hole strap, which stays on the back side over here. As far as the exhaust goes on this air conditioner, I just popped a hole, did a wall penetration flange and um, just have that set in there. This column of tools just has my pack out bag, which I use for a quick run if I'm just running in a house real quick. And then I have my M18 pack out vacuum and my cooler stays on the bottom. Then the regular floor mounting plate goes there and I have my framing tools in those drawers. And then I have a, a cabinet here, which I'll show in just a second. This has some of my more important tools that I probably secondary usage. And then up here is the hard case tools that I really don't find necessary to make pack out. And then I also have my transfer pump for draining water heaters and my flashlights that I keep handy. Over here is my pack out dolly. I love this thing. I don't use it a lot, but when I do, it is so handy. Now fastening this dolly to the wall is a wheelbarrow mount. Let me get down here so you can see it. A wheelbarrow hook from Lowe's and it fits perfectly. So what you do is you just roll this up and push it against the wall, slide this plate up and then put the screw in it and then take it off and put the screw in the top and it's perfect. All the weight stays on the trailer floor, but yet it can't come out. And this is where I store my levels as well. I put them right there. Now right here is my power crimpers and these are going to become a uh, pack out eventually as well. And they will be mounted on the plate right below where the impact was going to go. Again, we have these hooks right here um, that I used up front here on my socket set. These you can get at Lowe's. They're not real expensive and they're great. They're almost perfect like they're designed for pack out or for Milwaukee tools for some reason. So I have one here and also down here to hold the air snake. And I have not fastened the auger down just yet. I just rearranged all this. This did have a home right here in between the pack out dollar. But now it is still in the works to find a new home. So I have not done that just yet. So this is a modification I highly recommend you do if you have the battery operated 10 inch miter saw. This thing is so heavy, it's almost impossible to deal with for me in this trailer because I was having to move it back and forth, front, you know, left and right, out of the way. And as a plumber, I don't really use this a lot. I only use this for trim cuts and stuff whenever I'm remodeling bathrooms. Uh, I, I really don't use this a whole lot. So. I was having a hard time justifying keeping it on the trailer until I had this idea, if you will notice, it is through bolted to the worktop pack out. And this was a game changer. It actually helped me keep it on the trailer. So now I can take it off, I can mount it on the wall, I can uh, you know, use it on top of these rolling toolboxes, whatever. Uh, and it was, this saved me from having to set this thing off. Moving up here, you can see I still have plenty of room up here. As I said, I'm still rearranging the wall plates themselves. I have my two inch meter key. It sits right here, it's just spongy corded to the wall. Now out of everything that Milwaukee makes, uh, pack out and tool, this right here is probably one of my least favorite things. Uh, this long handle tool holder is very hard for me to use. None of my shovels fit on it. Uh, I think my broom may have fit on it. It really, it does great with storing uh, copper pipe. Uh, it holds that pretty well. So I have been able to make use of it for this little meter key and this, this uh, rolling yard stick and the stick pump. I had to modify the tool holder to get the stick pump to work. And let me show you how that is modified. So getting a close up, what I did is I actually popped these pins out so I could pull the rubber out here and here. And I keep them, I don't snap them all the way and I keep them where I can pull them up real easily, swing that out and the stick pump comes right out. I like that. I don't use this a whole lot. I don't, the only time I really have to use this is for whenever the meter box is full of water. Um, that's whenever I use this the most and it's great. Uh, I highly recommend you have this on your truck. 
if you're a plumber, but uh, this is very unfortunate. I wish they would have designed this some way thinking ahead where it could actually handle this. Um, really the opening needs to be able to handle a little bit larger diameter of a handle on a tool. So moving over here, nothing special. I had two whole straps screwed to the wall and just bungee corded my uh, ladders to the wall and my lights are stored in there as well. These right here are the Jorgensen Pony saw horses. I love them. I've used them for two years now. I like the clamp storage on them. They do take up quite a bit of room as far as this trailer in which I'm going to redesign. And I'm probably going to go with one that folds up and put these in my shop. Um, but yeah, as of right now, these are on the trailer. Now, these rolling toolboxes are great. In this one, I'll show you what I got inside in just a second. But I like these rolling toolboxes because um, they're great storage. And then also, if I need to roll in some tools into the house, I don't have to carry them all on my back. I'm able to roll it in. And if there's something I'm taking out, I can use this sort of like a dolly as well. Now, this rolling toolbox here, it never leaves the trailer. Pretty much permanent storage. It's actually the first pack out I ever had. A friend of mine gave it to me. And look how easy that is, having that miter saw in that pack out plate. And I can literally just mount it to the other pack out over here. The rolling box or on top of another drawer set or whatever it be, as long as it clears on the back of the saw. So in here though, this is pretty much permanent storage that I keep on this trailer. Um, I have my Forstner bits that stay in here, my two extra whole saw kits, which are uh, about burned out, they're pretty old. Um, and then I have some multi-tool blades that I keep in there. Uh, extra pass-through socket set, a little dust broom, and a hammer for installing LVT flooring, which like I said, I'm a plumber. I don't really do that a whole lot. So all that kind of just stays in there. And then I just keep this on there because I rarely have to get in that box. So moving back to the front of the trailer here, in this crate is where I kind of keep all my extra new materials from basket strainers to supply lines, access panels, uh, extension tubes, uh, all that stuff, P-traps, suitor vents. I keep all that in here. And the reason this worktop is up here is not for me to work on. It is so I don't throw anything in here and consider it a miscellaneous tote, which is what I'm very bad about. Now moving down here in the build, you'll see I have the M18 Packout Radio. This is where I keep all my woodworking tools. My foam pad just sits in there where I can pull it out, my knee pad. But in here, this is where I keep my, um, this is like a template for drilling out handles for cabinets. Uh, this right here speeds up your work if you're doing anything like that. Uh, in here you'll find I've got my M18 planer, I've got my rotary zip tool, uh, the M18 sander, uh, my jigsaw and my router, and then all the tools and uh, dust collectors that go along with those tools. All that goes in this pack out. Now as a plumber, I'm not in this one a lot, but I am a tradesman. I do like doing woodworking stuff. So moving down further in the build, you'll see this is my ProPress and my uh, impact and drill combo kit, which will be converted to pack out soon. I actually seen online that there's a guy who 3D prints inserts for this size pack out for the M12 Pro Press, which will be added to my arsenal very soon. So right here, let's take a look at the drawers. Now you'll notice that I did take the time to label these, which some have been reorganized uh, so the labels won't be correct or be missing. But I did this so that way whenever my wife is out in the field helping me, it would be super easy for her to come on the trailer and find the tool that I'm looking for because it's labeled and everything I like stays in the drawer together. So let's get started. This is one of my main used pack out uh, drawers. In here you'll find I have all sorts of my uh, channel locks, all different kinds. They go in here and I have some string line in here as well. Um, then over here you have all my crescent wrenches. They all go in this drawer. I've got minis, I've got, th this right here is my favorite crescent wrench there is, the Raptor. You can get this at Ferguson. I actually, I liked it so much I bought two. Uh, because just holding back up on something, these are great tools to have. I love these Raptor crescent wrenches. Now, uh, this right here, I gotta mention this because I'm talking about wrenches and uh, and channel locks. This is the Pipe Vice. Uh, this is the miniature version. Um, I'm actually waiting on them to send me a replacement because the spring is catching on this one. But I highly recommend this tool. It's pretty much like a ratcheting pipe wrench. Uh, if you're in a tight spot, if you're a plumber or if you're a mechanic, I highly recommend this tool because you can get up in the cabinet for an angle stop and you can tighten the supply line up and it'll just self ratchet. It just keeps resetting itself and you can just really tighten or break something loose either way. If you're a mechanic and you don't wanna to have to keep going and grabbing different wrenches, you can literally just slap this on and it adjusts. Uh, I'm not sure of all the sizes. I'll put a link to this tool in the description as well, but 
I love this thing. And you'll also see here, I have my tape measures. They stay here and my Allen wrenches stay there. I have a temperature gauge for meat that I use to check the temperature of water whenever I'm doing a set out to make sure it's at a safe level. And I keep my safety glasses handy as well. Moving down, this used to be my Sawzall drawer, but now it's become the drawer for my PVC pipe shears. Yeah, I, I love this tool. So I keep that in here. I also keep my abrasion cloth, my steel wool, and my flux. I keep that in here as well as my hub saving bits. Um, my PVC hub savers, I keep those in there as well. Now moving down further on the pack out builds here, you'll see I have a three drawer kit here. This is where I keep all of my bits that I can in this drawer. I also have some jigsaw blades in here, which I don't know why those are in here. Uh, and I have my security bits, miscellaneous of those, and my nut drivers. And I have the longer uh, impact extension, the quarter inch impact extension. I have that in here as well. Now in this next drawer, I have my M12 impact, which I love for just quick little installs. If I'm just hanging something on the wall, or if I'm in a cabinet putting a garbage disposal in, I like to have it uh, there. And then I also have the, the placement for the multi-tool here, the sanding attachment, drywall blade, which I think I just laid it there because I didn't have nowhere to put it. And then I cut this out for the multi-tool blades to lay in there as well. Now in the bottom drawer here, you see I have all my vacuum attachments. Uh, all the different tips that came in this kit I bought for the vacuum. And for a vacuum, I have both the backpack vac and the pack out vacuum, which you see over there. Moving over to the second column of pack outs, this is kind of a miscellaneous tote. So I have everything from drywall anchors, pipe strapping, my code book, um, some uh, flange, extra copper cutters. Those are in that pack out. It's just kind of a miscellaneous crate. Now moving on down further. If you're a tradesman of any kind, whether you're a plumber, you're an electrician, you're a trim guy, uh, a framer, you need a fastener bin of some sort. I like the pack out, as you can tell. Now in here, you'll see I have my torque screws. I have my backer on screws. Um, I use these a lot for toilet flanges, for uh, even these wall plates you see mounted there. Yeah, that's an inch and five eight screw. I use it a lot. I'm getting low here. This is where I like to keep my two and a halves or my twos. Sometimes I alternate between two and two and a halves. It doesn't really matter to me on that instance. Uh, and then my three inch torque screws here. Uh, this is where I've been keeping these little, these little uh, torque screws. I'm not sure what size they are. Let me look right here. I'll keep the bit in there with it. That is a T10. Those are nice for little trim stuff, little trim projects. I'm getting low here. This is where I keep my drywall screws, as you can tell, my tap cons. Uh, I keep a stud finder in here. This is not the greatest stud finder. I have another one. I have a zircon over there, but uh, that one stays in here. That way, no matter what, if I'm just hanging something on the wall for my wife or whatever, I've got a stud finder handy. Um, I keep self tappers on here as well. And then these are where I keep my longer tap cons and some miscellaneous screws. Um, staying there, lag screws, stuff like that. Uh, and then this, is, I guess, is a miscellaneous too. There's a discussion in there. I'm not sure why that's in there. But yeah, I highly recommend you have some sort of fastener box made primarily for screws. My next setup is for electrical. And you'll notice on the inside of this, I am not an electrician as I have continued to emphasize. I am a plumber. This is everything electrical from from car wiring for lights to stuff in a house where I keep wire nuts just for like a garbage disposal or um, and frankly, this trailer connectors I got just for this trailer. So yeah, that is what's in here. And I just kind of, I keep some zip ties in here and it doesn't fit with that uh, wire stripper, but I just spring it shut like that. Now, as we move further down, we get to my pex totes. Now these I love. For going in a crawl space, going in a basement, um, anything up in the attic, you can have all kinds of different PEX fittings. If you're a plumber, I'm sure you already have a PEX tote. You gotta have one of these. I have mine separated, so all my half and half to three quarter is in here. Now, as you see right here, I have my three quarter fittings, uh, my three quarter to one inch fittings and my one inch fittings themselves. I have the rings orientated as well. Uh, that way I can navigate and find what I need quickly. Now moving to the drawers in the second column of packouts, uh, this top drawer has my primary tools, my most common tools for installation. Um, I have my torpedoes in here. I have my uh, my pex cutters. This uh, heat trap cutting tool. It's it's pretty neat. It works pretty good. Uh, I like that it puts a chamfer on. 
the, the pipe. Uh, and then I have my PVC ratcheting shears there. I keep my Sharpies and as a paint pen in here. I keep that there. It's pretty quick to get to. And then I have my faucet change tools there. This pass-through socket, I literally only use to uh, for uh, Johnny bolts. Love that. Now this right here, uh, if you're a plumber, I recommend you do this. I bought this at Ferguson. It is a screwdriver uh, sink clip tool. And I just cut that end off with a hacksaw and I chuck it up into a drill. And it makes putting sinks in a breeze. So uh, recommend you do that. Now, next drawer down is where I move my saws all over to and all the blades stay right there. Not much more I can say about that. Those do tend to come out. Uh, anybody that has a pack out will know that these dividers like to raise up. Anyways, moving on down here, this is kind of a miscellaneous drawer. I'm not going to go into real deep detail about that. Got some self tappers in there, um, extra nut drivers that I picked up at uh, Harbor Freight on sale. Now, moving down to the drawer bank below that one, we have all my different pliers. Uh, this is kind of a miscellaneous plier drawer, uh, nail pullers, spackling tools, scrapers. Uh, just different stuff and I keep my basin wrench in here because it really won't fit nowhere else as well as the, the kitty paw or cat's claw whatever you call that um, I keep that in there because there really isn't nowhere else to keep it it's all cobalt so might as well match the bottom drawer here is where I keep the whole hog and uh, the bits for it this little three inch cutoff tool that ends in there as well bit extender um, and I've got some of my SDS tools they go in here as well just for uh, quick storage it's easy to find now in this pack out, you'll find a bunch of random stuff. Uh, I've not really quite organized that yet. But as you'll see in this crate, I keep all my two inch and inch and a half miscellaneous fittings. You never know what you're gonna need when you're installing sinks or whenever you're doing any kind of drainage work. It's important to have these on hand. Now below that crate, this is where I keep my Pro Press fittings. Uh, I'm a little low on fittings right now, but uh, I keep a miscellaneous tote of those. Various things from half inch tees uh, to couplings, reducing couplings. Uh, some ball valves, threaded adapters, all sorts, PIX adapters. I keep those on hand. You never know what you're going to run into out in the field doing service work, repairs. So it's important as a plumber that I have those as well. So moving to the drawers that's in this third row of pack outs, I have pretty much all my specialty plumbing tools. This is where I keep everything from my PEX ring reclaim tools, this little old vintage uh, basin wrench. I don't really like this thing, but it preps copper pipe before sweating or pressing. I have this mowing cartridge puller, foldable plumber's multi-tool is what it is, but it's all right. I've had that thing for a long time. And then I have this socket I keep handy for prepping water heaters. Yes, I use a socket whenever I prep water heaters, it speeds it up. I have the sockets that go to the pass-through wrench, the pass-through socket, which I showed earlier. Keep those here because they're easy to find. I'm not having to dig through nothing. I know exactly where they are. I keep some inside pipe cutters handy. Um, garbage disposal tools in case I need to give one to a, a customer if they don't have one or if I go unstop one or un unclog one I can give them one to use themselves obviously keep Teflon handy um, I have this copper ferrule puller socket I mean a ratchet that I keep for prepping water heaters in case I don't use the impact I can use the socket itself I have this doctor disposal tool for changing out garbage disposals and installing and I love this thing it comes in handy if you're having one that's being a pain in the butt can't hold it up by hand and you need something to if you're, if you're laying the trap out whatever it is if you just need something to hold it up in the air and hold it there for you take it set of hands and i love it and obviously i keep pipe no pain as well now my camera died so i'm going to do a voice over here real quick so what you can see um there's my copper cutters both the milwaukee ones m12 and my manual copper cutters as well as the pex crimpers my reaming tool and some solder for sweating now as you may see how they're labeled here i call them ratchet crimpers but what they are they're stainless crimp rings and this is the layout i have for those i will soon be putting some bins in here to hold these so they're not sliding around underneath the foam the half and three quarter do like to try to go underneath this foam where they're raised up here in the middle so uh, that's something I'm dealing with. But this is the layout I have for them. I have the foam cut out for them so they lay in there nice and neat, organized, and that's how I like to stay. Now moving down to the next set of drawers, you'll see this is where I'm keeping a lot of my materials for installation as well. For toilet swapping, I love having this liquid lock. It's a game changer, it turns the water into a sludge. I like this stuff a lot. I keep Teflon in here, uh, epoxy putty I keep in here. 
uh, some extra sink clips, looks like. I keep those in here, extra blade for my PVC shears are in there. Um, sometimes there's water heater elements in here, yeah, there's some in there. Extra materials for flush valves are in here. And I keep my angle stops over here of different sorts and makeups. Um, those are there and toilet shims and extra uh, ferrules today in here, trap adapter, just whatever I may run into that I need. I try to keep extra ones here as well as like the Johnny bolts, stuff like that. Moving down to the next drawer where I keep my wax rings, some extra supply lines for different things from dishwashers to uh, the quarter inch feed for a refrigerator. You never know what you're going to run into. I keep those on here as well as some disposal end waste. I have those on here as well. So moving over to this crate, we have the PEX expansion tool, the M12 kit. It stays in here. I have the Bosch laser level. It stays in here. My larger speed squares, um, they're up in here, the 12 inch. Those stay in there. I have a Tyvek suit that kind of acts as a cushion. Then I have my M18 transfer pump. Got an M12 light, got the M18 spotlight, all that rides right here. Now moving into this box, which was underneath that crate you just saw, this is where I keep some common tools to say, uh, more like secondary tools. Uh, I have my M18 porta band, portable bandsaw. I have my SD plus rotary hammer, SDS plus rotary hammer, M18, I love that thing. Uh, and then I have my fuel grinder. Um, it stays in there as well. This is probably my least favorite tool that Milwaukee makes as far as a power tool. This heat gun absolutely eats batteries. Um, no more than I use one. It's not that big of a deal, but if you're somebody that uses a heat gun very often, I don't recommend that heat gun. Uh, don't fool with putting batteries in that thing all the time. On the inside of the cabinet, you'll find I keep my putty uh, W40. My Blue Monster wipes stay in there. I always keep thrift. Um, I don't know why I have this foam cleaner in there, but that's in there. My thermal imaging camera by Cobalt's in there, and I also have a little uh, Cobalt inspection camera. It stays in that cabinet as well. Moving down to the next set of drawers on this side of the trailer, this is where I keep my framing and trim work tools. So you'll see I have my speed squares there, uh, my plum, it stays in there, my zircon uh, stud finders in there, and my screwdrivers, they all stay in here in some shims as well. I'm keeping that in there for some reason. These are 3D printed inserts. This is for my M18 Brad nailer, uh, 18 gauge Brad nailer. I love this nailer. I think it's jammed on me one time in the whole year I've had it with some very active use. Now you'd be wondering why, Blake, how are you using this tool so much and it doesn't look worn? Because in this 3D insert, in this 3D printed insert, or if you have a foam insert, the majority of the wear and tear your tool will get is in transportation. So if you have a very efficient way of storing your tools, you can keep them looking brand new as long as you take good care of them. Moving down to the last drawer on this is my M12 pin nailer and my M12 uh, crown stapler. Okay, not much to say here, 3D printed inserts. Um, I love that. Now as far as my pipe wrenches go, those are just sitting inside of two hole straps that I have mounted the wall. That's a six inch hole saw that I just run a drywall screw to hold it because I don't use it very commonly, but there's not really where anywhere to store it. Uh, right here I have my hole saws, which you'll see that's the regular hole saw kit, hole dozer to say. That's a pack out kit, I bought that that way. This is where I keep my tile bits. The new Milwaukee self tap bits are in there as well. Um, and then I have what I call a three hole cutter, the uh, big dog, the big hog, pack out hole saws. That pretty much sums up this pack out build I did on this enclosed trailer. If you'd like to see more content or if there's something that you want me to go in more detail on, give you a better perspective on it, feel free to comment below. But as always, like and subscribe so you can see more content like this. In other words, I'm out of here guys. See you later.